Hey, it's Jessie from Squeegee and Ink and welcome back to Printer's Corner. This is where I answer all your questions that you've given me on social media in a little bit more depth. You can actually load us up with questions for a future episode by using hashtag Printer's Corner and asking that on any of our videos or reels or anything where you see us online. The three questions that we have in this episode are about troubleshooting under or overexposed screens, how many coats you should be doing on your screens and also we talk a little bit about capillary film. If any of those particular questions are more relevant to you, skip ahead in the video and find the information that you need. The first question is from Anonymous Oreo 3 and they've said, quick question, when I wash my screen to expose the stencil, the emulsion turns into a light colour and goes away with it. What am I doing wrong? Um, that quite quickly shows that when you're washing it, basically I expect that the emulsion is just breaking away and washing with all the unexposed emulsion. If that's happening, then you just haven't exposed your emulsion to enough UV light and therefore it hasn't hardened and become water resistant. The quick fix for that is to up your exposure time by quite a lot really, probably maybe even start out by increasing it by 50%. And then if you're finding that it's still washing out, then you need to start looking at whether um, maybe your emulsion's gone off or you can troubleshoot it in different ways, but this clearly states that it's underexposed at this point. We actually have extensive uh, resources on our website, including an exposure calculator and a whole course on exposing screens for screen printing, which you might find really useful. And also watch out for our podcasts because I even interview uh, emulsion experts on the podcast and that's basically us talking about an hour troubleshooting everyone's exposure problems but this one's quite a quick fix and uh, maybe you could start using an exposure calculator to hone in your times even quicker and be more efficient for your studio this question also leads on to our main question about how long to expose our screen for so i'm going to give you the timing that i do with my setup so I've got a really big, I'm going to say industrial exposure unit with a metal halide bulb, which is like a really rich source of UV. And I also tend to use a dual cure Diazo mixed emulsion. And uh, I do mine for around the four minute mark. And that basically allows my emulsion in my setup to expose and harden nicely. However, a lot of you guys are going to be using overhead lamps or LED units. So you might even be looking in the maybe one and a half to two minute range for a single pot emulsion. I would just do a ballpark figure on an exposure calculator and then you can really, really quickly see if you're under or over exposing your screens. I'm actually going to put a link in the description to a video that we've done which covers as many troubleshooting things as we can think of all about exposing screens. So hopefully you'll find that really handy and just get to the bottom of your screen exposures in an afternoon. Our second question is from Lock and Key Creative. They said, just one coat on each side here. Is that for every mesh count or high counts only? So yes, we do typically coat one on one which means one coat on each side of our screens. That is because of the type of emulsion and the application that we tend to be using. I can see how you'd put more coats of emulsion on your screen if you're trying to achieve a thicker deposit of ink in one go onto your substrate or t-shirt. So that tends to be what happens when you're doing high builds, um, printing adhesives, or knowing that you're gonna be printing white ink and you want to deposit a lot of the ink in one go, for example. Uh, the main things that you actually need to look out for is that you're encapsulating the mesh with emulsion. And you can't achieve that with one coat and then no coats on the other side. You can just about do it with one on each side. And then the more coats that you're putting down, the more ink that you're putting down onto the substrate each time. So I would say for the level of detail that I'm trying to achieve, one and one's good. Um, you would probably still stick to that. 
You can also watch the latest podcast episode which is coming out on Thursday and that is interviewing the Emulsion Guru. And on that podcast, we're gonna go into loads of depth about how many coats we should be doing on our screens, what we should be looking out for, loads of troubleshooting. Plus, I'm putting a link in the description to our emulsion and exposing video, which I think you'll find really helpful as well. Our final question is from Don Quintino. And they said, hey, thank you very much for sharing your experiences. Have you ever maybe used photo emulsion sheets? like the one shown in this video around seven minutes 20. We're gonna put a little clip of this video here so you can see what we're referring to. Uh, instead of pouring this liquid uh, photosensitive layer into the scoop coater, uh, they sell photo emulsion already in a sheet on like a plastic backing. And what we do is wet down the screen with some water and then unfurl this layer of photosensitive material onto the front of the screen and then just quickly use a squeegee to uh, brush off the excess water and give it a little bit of pressure. The screen can be dried in any orientation and it will dry more quickly than this old fashioned liquid photo polymer and um, you will have a much more consistent layer. So remember what I was saying with the resolution is a largely determined by the consistency of your photo polymer. And as you can imagine, trying to get like a perfectly, you know, within 10 micron consistent layer of stuff on there with this hand process, it's kind of iffy. So it's really much better to use a pre-made film uh, and just be done with it and you get this perfectly smooth photopolymer layer. That video was filmed by Applied Science and in it they're showing how to achieve high definition with screen printing. And they actually suggested using capillary film, which is what they were putting as like a sheet onto the back of the screens. I haven't actually used it because I haven't been able to get my hands on it. And then I'm thinking, is there actually a better way for me personally to be coating my screens? Because I do it en masse and I'm trying to do it in the most economical way possible. So say if you're not uh, prepared to coat your own screens with emulsion and you want to have something which is very, very precise so you want a really even deposit for some particular reason, um, maybe even you're doing high build or speciality work, then you can actually choose the thickness of the capillary film and it's really, really accurate the whole way across the screen. So that would be a good use case for it. You don't tend to find these in normal screen printing studios just because of the price and the fact that we can quickly hand coat our screens. So no, it isn't something that I've personally used, but I know how to use it and I can see why I might pick it if I was having trouble coating my screen really evenly for some kind of speciality work. So to round up this week's question, which is how long should I expose my screen for? For me, it's around four minutes, but for you, it's gonna be something different. We've got so many variables, there isn't an easy answer to this question. However, I have got videos on how to hone in your exposure time, and I've got free exposure calculators on the squeegeeinc.co.uk website, which I hope you quickly go and download and sort out all the problems for why you might be searching something like that on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Printer's Corner, and don't forget to use hashtag Printer's Corner on your questions so I can pick those up for a future episode.